beings who were half human and half angel would be called the Nephilim. These Nephilim, often referred to as giants, had, had superhuman strength and abilities and were known as men of renown. This early civilization, which included fallen angels, Nephilim, and humans, became increasingly wicked. After our wickedness reached a boiling point, God could no longer restrain his angry hand. So he alerts a righteous man named Noah that he is soon to destroy the world in a flood and that Noah's family should begin straight away building a large boat so that he and his family may survive the earth's coming inundation. What's more, Noah was told to bring two of every animal so that earth may be repopulated after the flood waters subside. The vast majority of angels, Nephilim, and mankind were killed in this flood which lasted for 40 days. Before the waters subsided, Noah released a raven from the ark to discover whether dry land was yet peaking above the waters, but it only flew back and forth. Next Noah released a dove into the air, and the bird returned with an olive branch, indicating to Noah that there was indeed land nearby. With the waters subsiding, the ark would come to rest on a mountain named Ararat. Noah, his family, and the animals exited the ark and once more began to replenish the earth. After the descendants of Noah successfully repopulate the earth, they again lose God's favor. Instead of dispersing and filling every quarter of the planet, they concentrate in a land called Babylonia. The king of Babylonia, Nimrod, endeavored to build a tower that could reach heaven. This is the famous Tower of Babel. God, who is enraged by Nimrod's presumption and arrogance, takes matters into his own hands by confusing the languages of Nimrod's workforce. The Babylonian kingdom is instantly cast into disorder as its inhabitants no longer speak a single language. This act of confusing the languages accomplished God's original intent for humanity because it caused humanity to finally split up and occupy the whole earth and, most importantly, not reach heaven. Although Bible stories are the most well known, especially in the West, they are not the first and they are not unique. Humanity's relationship with the serpent is indeed a strange one. The nature of the reptile is alien to our own, so humans have a natural aversion to reptiles. Humans are characterized by both the cold-blooded way of the reptile and compassionate sympathies that violate our sense of self-preservation and seem to stem from a mystical place in the soul. And if a human were forced to choose between the death of a reptile and the death of a mammal, he or she would most probably consign that serpent to death rather than the likes of a bunny rabbit. So it's quite curious that humans have, for so many thousands of years, revered the serpent and frequently associated it with the gods. There's hardly a single point on the globe or in history whose local population did not associate the gods with serpents and dragons. In the Bible, the serpent is often spoke of as the enemy of God. And in one case, the Bible refers to Satan as that old serpent. Even though the whole of the Bible identifies the serpent with evil, even Jesus was heard saying, be as harmless as doves and as wise as serpents. The problem with this statement taken literally is that reptiles aren't exactly the geniuses of the animal kingdom. Warm-blooded animals are, on the average, more intelligent than reptiles. Considering the serpent to be a creature of wisdom is an interesting choice considering that the serpent is mostly instinctual. Egypt, a civilization dating back to 2500 BC, allegedly, also has a pantheon of gods associated with the serpent. In fact, it is nearly unheard of for an Egyptian god to be depicted without a serpent. Even the pharaohs of Egypt wore a uraeus on their headpiece. The uraeus was a serpent, which symbolized the immortals. Gods of Greek mythology are likewise associated and often depicted with snakes. Meanwhile, here in the New World, the mythologies of the Mayans, Aztecs, Incas, and Native Americans is replete with serpent symbolism. Hinduism, the prevailing religion of India, is yet another religion whose gods are consistently associated with snakes. In China and the whole of the Orient, the immortal gods are connected to or described as dragons and serpents. 
In Islam, the serpent is associated with Satan and demons. In Voodoo, the gods are again associated with serpents. Reptile gods are seen as far east as the Pacific Islands. No matter what place or age we examine, serpents provide a central theme in that region's mythological tales. Serpents are also repeatedly associated with villains. Even more frequently than the themes of serpentine gods is the theme of a global flood. The number of stories regarding a worldwide flood is incredible, and the similarities between the various tales of inundation are even more alarming. Most people who are even remotely familiar with Atlantis will know that it was consumed by a flood. In the Norse tradition of Sweden and Norway, a flood which poured forth from the bleeding god Emir consumed the whole of humanity, save a man named Bergamir and his wife who survived the flood using a hollowed out tree trunk as a vessel. In the Sumerian Babylonian accounts, a man named Unnapishtim is warned by a god, Ea, that another god, Enlil, intends to flood the earth. Unnapishtim then built a massive boat and loaded his wife and two of every animal on board. As the flood began to subside, Unnapishtim released the dove as Noah did to see if there was dry land nearby. And like Noah from the Bible, the boat finally rested on a mountain. In Chinese mythology, Gong, the serpent-looking water god, wanted to expand his sphere of influence and so contrived to flood the world. Gong nearly succeeded but was stopped by the righteous god Zurong. In Greek mythology, Zeus is enraged by the evil mankind was partaking in, and so therefore plotted to destroy everything on earth in a great flood. But wily Prometheus warned a man named Deucalion who builds a chest and survives the flood. In Persian mythology, the benevolent god Ahura Mazda tells a man named Yima that a terrible winter of frost and snow is upon him. Ahura Mazda commands Yima to build an underground enclosure to protect two of every creature and a small group of choice people. In Serbian legends, a rooster who acts as a messenger of God becomes increasingly ignored by decadent humanity. Man's greed unleashed a turrent of water from an egg that can be paralleled to a Pandora's box. Only one man, Pranyas, survived this flood by hanging on to a grapevine. The people of Southeast Asia say that a flood consumed all of humanity save a small number of men and women aboard a raft. The Mandans, a Native American tribe, tell the story of Lone Man who, together with the Creator, fashioned the earth and humanity. Lone Man, who was very much a savior figure, entered the world of man because he saw that humanity was plagued by evil spirits. In order to enter our world, however, Lone Man needed to be born from the womb of a virgin mother. One day a virgin girl was eating corn, so Lone Man transformed himself into a kernel of corn, which the virgin girl ate and became pregnant from. The virgin's parents considered the pregnancy holy, and the child, who was in fact a lone man reincarnated, was perfect in all his ways. After growing into a young man, the day came for an annual trip by boat, where lone man insisted the boat sail despite the presently bad weather, much to the protest of the twelve men already on board. Yet the boat did sail, and during the voyage was attacked by demons. Lone man made short work of these attacks, and when the boat was endangered by a whirlpool, Lone Man rose to his feet and reminded the Whirlpool that it was he, Lone Man, that created the water. The Whirlpool promptly dissipated. One day, Lone Man arrived to an island, proclaiming that a flood was soon to destroy the earth and that a fortress must be built at the center of the village. He promised to return one day, and after leaving the village, the flood waters did come, which protected those who believed him. It's important to note that this tale of a chosen one who travels with 12 guys predates the arrival of Europeans to North America. In the African myth from the Mande people of Mali, an evil god named Pemba fell from heaven and was barred from returning because he stole male seeds from God.